Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown says a draft bill will be presented on reforming the way state companies are managed. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what could be on the cards and whether it will be sufficient to reverse serious underperformance at many enterprises. Hi Terence. Hi Snow. The context here is one of a pretty bleak governance picture at many state-owned firms. Yes, it's, it's really a, it's a litany of woe uh, when it comes to governance at state-owned enterprises. Every year, every month, there seems to be a new crisis, a new scandal. You know, the high-profile ones, I think we all know, around the SABC, around Eskom earlier in the year, around um, what's happening currently at, Tr at Prasa, at Prasa the, uh, the railways uh, operator. And, you know, just go, and then we've also had issues around the South African post office, and, and really the big one. I suppose is this what's happening now at South African Airways where the board and the executives are at loggerheads. There seems to be a disregard for uh, PFMA processes by the board and you know it just seems to be a situation of more turmoil and less stability at a lot of these companies and uh, I think we s we're not only seeing it uh, that, that instability uh, affecting um, uh, morale at the companies, but it's also starting to affect operational and financial performance. In fact, financial performance is under pressure at a lot of these uh, entities, and some of them have had to approach uh, uh, the National Treasury for bailouts. In fact, SAA, as part of its turnaround plan, it always indicated that it's going to be seeking more um, money than it had already received, around 14 billion rand, to stay in business. Um, and uh, I think the, the, the process was that it needed to tick, up, tick a number of boxes before it could get to that point. And one of the key boxes related to the way it was going to handle the Airbus contract and the way that the change is there. And uh, it seems now that uh, there's, there's another uh, agenda at play. And uh, that's going to be, uh, that's, that's created a new crisis uh, around whether Treasury can extend further guarantees and whether there's trust in the board and whether there's a trust between the board and the executive leadership at SAA. So it's, it's, a, it's a mess in a number of contexts, and it's one that I think is dragging the economy down, it's dragging the morale down of employees at these enterprises, and it's also dragging the confidence levels of South Africans down all the time in the, in the ability of these state-owned companies to actually deliver. What is being discussed with government to deal with this negative trend? Yeah, there has been an interministerial committee set up under the deputy president and they've got a lot on their plate. Now we've had several uh, looks at governance at state-owned companies over the years and we've had a number of uh, interventions and plans that have been presented. None of these have really been imp implemented in a big way. But I think the IMC is go trying to take this forward and we heard from the Public Enterprises Lynn, uh, Minister Lynn Brown who no longer, for instance, has SAA in her portfolio, has the other big six, the Eskims, the Transnets, etc. in her portfolio, but there are a number that fall outside that, such as the Sandrals and the Prices and the South African Post Offices and the SABCs. So there's a lot of these state-owned companies. I think in all, when you look across the uh, government system, that's national, provincial, and municipal, there's said to be over 700 state-owned companies in the system. So the IMC is obviously looking at those big ticket ones like the SAAs, but it's also looking at really the whole portfolio of state-owned companies and saying, do these companies really need to exist as separate entities? Do some of them maybe just need to be drawn back into line departments and operate under direct, uh, the direct uh, authority of, say, a minister or in a provincial uh, MEC? Uh, and there'll be some where there may be this merger, merger opportunities or even... Uh, some that sale sale opportunities, and then where's the so-called Schedule Two um, state-owned enterprise? These are the large uh, enterprises. These are the ones like the Sanrals, the Prices, the Eskims, the Transnets, the Safcols. Uh, you know, I can list. <laughs> you can go on and on. But these are the larger entities. Uh, how those should be managed um, in future, so particularly around governance. How do boards get appointed? How do executive managers get appointed? Uh, there's, there is this uh, phenomenon where, where um, uh, you know, cabinet approves these appointments at the moment, and you know these things go go ahead of cabinet after. Say, for instance, if you're ex appointing a CEO at an Eskom, it will go through the board will go through a selection process. The board will make recommendations to the minister, who will then take it on to cabinet, 
and there's, you know, by that stage, uh, there's unlikely to be any major intervention because the board process has been run. But I think the framework for governance needs to be tightened. The framework for what entities should be state-owned companies and what can just be department, departmental activities um, or uh, programs has to be worked out. And especially this whole thing, this whole tussle between uh, the politicians, the boards, and the um, executive managers, how to sort that out. And then also have consequences for executives and boards that don't deliver. I think consequence management in government is very weak at the moment. So we see this perpetual begging bowl approach to the National Treasury and the lining up, driving up the N N1 to Pretoria uh, and asking for more, uh, more and more cash to uh, stabilize entities that continue to get themselves into trouble. So there needs to be more consequence management or consequences where boards and um, executives do not deliver. So I think that's what we're going to start seeing. Apparently, early next year, the concept paper um, that will predate the, the draft bill will be released for s uh, public dissemination. And that will look at the, the management of these state-owned companies, or, or shareholder management of these state-owned co companies into the future. It will be refined into a piece of legislation. And the idea is possibly by the end of next year to have a much tighter framework um, as to how we're going to manage these. Whether there should be a Department of Public Enterprises, for instance, that is a shareholder responsibility. At the moment it only has responsibility for six. Whether that sh department should take responsibility for all um, Schedule II type entities and, uh, and um, take them outside of the policy making departments. We do have these, these blurring of lines sometimes. Uh, where a, um, a policy department also has shareholder responsibility. So you've got the transport department, you know, uh, regulating uh, and setting policy for transport and then also having shareholder mandate for Sanral, for instance, or Prasa. So is that the best uh, uh, way to do it? Should it fall under Department of Public Enterprises at all? Should that fall away? Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of debates that need to be happening. There's, there's strengths and weaknesses to either model. So I think we're some way off to having certainty, but there's no doubt that we need to get some other framework. We can't leap, uh, leap from or lurch from one governance crisis to another governance crisis and one bailout to the next. Could this eventually lead to the privatization of some of these state entities? I think it does put the issue back on the agenda because there's such poor underperformance and poor delivery from many of these state-owned companies. I think that uh, the, the political resistance to privatization is starting to, to sort of weaken because, uh, you know, they're not delivering in terms of the, uh, their, their commercial mandate and therefore have got no chance of delivering on a developmental mandate. So they're not playing that twin role that they're supposed to be playing at the moment. Many of them, I can't say, it, it's a can't, not all of them are in the same boat, but there's many uh, that are underperforming at the moment. So I think taking a look at it and saying what does government really need to own strategically uh, where, where, can it play, where can it add value developmentally to keep these? Um, but I think it does put the privatization back on the agenda. Obviously, it's a highly contested and contentious area. But I think when it comes to the smaller entities and merging those into department or maybe selling those off or spinning those off uh, might not be such a problem. I think when it comes to these larger ones, the Schedule II ones, it's going to be a much more politically contested terrain. And it, but, but I do think that the performance issues is weakening the resolve of those who are saying hold these as state-owned enterprises at, or state-owned companies at all costs because we actually need these things to deliver more than anything else. So it's going to be interesting. I think we are far away off from any privatization of the large ones any, anyway. But I think it does put uh, that back on the agenda because I think South Africans are tired of bailouts and they want delivery from these companies. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.